Well, yesterday's devotion, we looked at Jesus praying uh, for his own glory to be glorified, not just for himself, but for us and for the glory of the Father, that we might uh, be granted eternal life through his work, through his ministry, what he's accomplished. And now we come in John 17 as we continue with the real Lord's Prayer. Someone have called it this Jesus' high priestly prayer. In John 7, 17, 6, here's what he has to say. As he left off saying uh, in 5, he says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested or revealed your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Remember when we said uh, before Jesus chose the, his apostles, he spent the night in prayer. You see, it says here that, Lord, I have revealed your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. The men you have given me. It was the Father's plan. Again, we see that Jesus is acknowledging the Father's guidance and plan and control in his life. Now, you might say, well, how limited was Jesus as a result of not doing things himself? He said, I am being constrained. I mean, he was God Almighty, and yet he had to uh, submit to the Father's will in all things and the Father's direction in the smallest and minutest of matters. But did that cause him to be some kind of robot? No. I mean, look at the life of Jesus Christ. You'll never find someone more amazing and more glorious and have accomplished more than anyone else that has ever lived a thousand times over. And so, my friend, we can see here how explicitly as Jesus was praying, we understand that he was praying to do the Father's will right down to the minutest of details. He was seeking the Father to walk in the will and the way of Almighty God. Every step he took on earth, he took it in dependence on the Father. Now, my friend, how do you live? Do you think that if you surrender the control of your life to Jesus Christ, to God, to the Spirit, to the Father, that somehow you're going to miss something, that you're going to be less? Look at the life of Jesus. Was it not much more? Oh, my friend, open up your eyes to see that surrendering to the control of Jesus Christ, to yield your life to Him, to allow Him to guide and direct your footsteps every day, to say, Father, not my will, but your will be done, to walk the footsteps that God has planned for you to walk in. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 that He has ordained for good works for us to walk in them. Oh, my friend, you won't lose. The world will look and say, oh, you, you're not, you're not your, your own person, you're a puppet. I would rather be a puppet for the Lord than to be controlled by the strings of the devil. For let me tell you something, you're going to serve somebody. There are evil spirits who are at work, and you are not so smart to think you can deceive them. They will deceive you. And my friend, if you're not a Christian today, you are being deceived. You are not your own master. You are under the control of the wicked one. I didn't say you're possessed by the devil. But the influence of the devil, the influence of your sinful nature, the influence of a world gone amok has corrupted your life. And you need Jesus Christ. You need his guidance. If the Son of God, in order to fulfill his task, in order to be all that he was meant to be, was, says, says here as he is praying, he said, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. That Jesus, in all of his choices, depended on the Father's blessing, the Father's guidance, the Father's will, and the Father's way. Oh, do you need to walk this way? Absolutely. Do you? Hmm. I have to look at myself and say, 
No, Lord, not all the time. Sometimes I try to run my own life. I go my own way, do my own thing. Tack a little God in here and there. Oh, friends, don't go this route. Rather, surrender, submit, and look to the Lord. Look to the Father. Look to the Son. Look to the Spirit for all of your wisdom and all of your directions and everything that you need in life. For this is how Jesus lived, and this is how Jesus prayed. And so he prays for his disciples. He prays for them. He says, now they have known all the things that you have given me are from you. Now they understand that everything that I have given them has come from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. How explicit is this? And they received them. And have surely known that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. Father, this great task of bringing these men, he's speaking here of his disciples particularly, of giving these men to me, and the responsibility I had to reveal the Father, to reveal the truth, to bring the words that the Father had for them. He said, I've, I've completed this task. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've revealed your name to the men you have given me out of the world. This was the ministry of Jesus Christ to those disciples. This was his care for them. This was his call upon them. And we see this revealed here as he's praying. And now he says this in verse 9. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours and are mine, and I am glorified in them. He says, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for these, these ones that you have given to me. And he says, they're yours. They are mine, and all this mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. Oh, yes, Jesus is saying, Father, you and I, we're one, and we together own these disciples. They belong to us. Who do you belong? Do you belong to Jesus? Have you surrendered to him? Given your heart to him? May the Spirit of God quicken you and awaken you and make you realize you need to belong to Jesus. You need to belong to God. But here we see Jesus saying, I'm not praying for the world here, not, not at this point. I am praying for my, for my disciples. You see the tender shepherd's care? Do you see that as he prays that he would be glorified, he's praying that they would be preserved. He knows that he's leaving them, and he's asking for them. He says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. Again, he's looking to the point where he will no longer be there. The moment is coming. He's not going to be there any longer. And he says, they are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, so keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Oh, the tender shepherd's care. As he's uh, prayed for himself that he would be glorified, but with a purpose, glorified that he would give eternal life to those that believe in him. That he would be glorified that the Father would be glorified. That this unity of the Father and the Son would be fully and wonderfully all that it was meant to be. And that he would take God, the, the humanity into heaven. He says, I pray for them. I pray for these disciples. I'm leaving them behind. They're going to be in the world. And I'm asking you, O Lord. Listen what he says. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given to me. Now he says, I'm not going to be here, but you keep them, Lord. You preserve them. You protect them. You watch over them. Oh, do you see the fullness of the care of God? Do you see the intercession of Jesus for uh, these disciples at this time? It's beautiful. We will get to what Jesus' prayer is for you and me. But for now, I want you to see how he was looking after them, even though he was leaving them. How he was committing them into the Father's care while he was going through the cross and the death and his resurrection. 
And you notice he prays this. I prayed that they may be one as we are one. You've given me these that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you have given me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, I need to take notice of this, that the father had committed Jesus Christ to choose Judas Iscariot. He chose a wicked man. He chose an unrepentant man. He chose a man who had a demon in him. And this was in the plan of God. It's, he's called the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. It was necessary that there be a betrayer among them. And Judas Iscariot was chosen for this purpose. Now you might say, well, what about poor Judas? The thing with poor Judas is that Judas chose, chose to be wicked, chose not to submit to the rule and the authority of Jesus Christ. Jesus said early in his ministry, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. He knew that he chose a devil. He knew that he chose a betrayer among him. It was the fulfilling of scripture. It was exactly as it needed to happen. But Judas Iscariot was raised up to this position because he was that wicked person. He was that person who was a thief. The Bible says he was a thief and he, he had the money bags that his purposes and his plans were wicked indeed. And that is why he says, I have kept them in your name. Those you have given me, none of them is lost except the son of perdition. The scripture might be fulfilled. The 11 were given to the son for salvation and one was given to the son for condemnation. What will you do? Oh, my friend, do not have the wicked heart of Judas. Do not have an hypo hip hypo be a hypocrite. Do not be filled with hypocrisy as Judas was, who pretended to be the disciple of the Lord, but who was looking for his own personal and selfish gain, who had his own plans, and who thought that he could wield those plans and manipulate God to do what he wanted. Sadly, this sounds very familiar to a lot of people who claim to follow Jesus Christ. They want to be God. They do not want to submit as Jesus here submitted to do everything that the Father told him to do. They want to do their own plans and go their own way and are unwilling to submit to the plans of God. Even when Peter rose up and said, Not so, Lord, when Jesus said he was going to go to the cross, the Lord rebuked him and Peter submitted to that rebuke. When, Jesus, when Peter said, Lord, I'm never going to wash your feet, Jesus said, if you don't wash me, you have no part with me. Jesus, Peter submitted. And Jesus prayed for him. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Even though he said, I know you will betray me. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I have kept them. I have kept them. Oh, my friend. Oh, my friend. Let me make it clear to you that Jesus will keep those who belong to him. That the Father will keep those who belong to the Son. Your hope for salvation is not in you, it is in him. It is he that preserves and keeps those who are truly his own. The father gave them to the son and they are kept. They are preserved. They were kept and they were preserved. Look at the mighty prayer of Jesus Christ on their behalf. And know this, that if you are truly the Lord's, if you have been given to Jesus for salvation, he will never let you go. John chapter 6 says, All that the Father has given me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will in no wise, or for no reason will I cast them out. Oh, do you see the preser preserving hand of God? Do you see the tender care of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd's heart, as he says, I've kept them, now you keep them. Praise God. But he says, Now I come to you, that these things I speak in the world, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. His passion and his desire is that they would experience the joy of Jesus. Do you see how tender this prayer that Jesus is for his disciples? I have given them your word. 
and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Now, he says, I want them to have my joy. And the reason why I want them to have my joy is because, because they are in a world that hates them. Oh, you need the joy of the Lord. If you're going to live Christianity out, you need the joy of the Lord in your life. You need the presence of God. Uh, you need his fullness in your life because you're going into a world that hates the truth. I've given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Friends, if you're a Christian, you're not of the world. You're not the world's way. You don't belong to the world. You belong to Jesus Christ. And you need to understand these things and accept and receive and walk in the joy of the Lord. The, the Bible says in the Old Testament, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Jesus said, I'm not praying for you to take them out of the world. Even though they're in the world, I don't want them out of the world. He's going home. But he says, I have to leave them behind. And I have to leave them in this world. They have a task to do in this world. Their task, of course, was to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ, just as yours and mine. Our task is this. And so he didn't pray that they would be taken out of the world. Jesus didn't say, I want them all to go off in a monastery somewhere, to go in a commune somewhere and stay there so they'll be away from the world. No, he prayed for them that they should be kept in the world. They... Your, the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Preserve them in the world. Preserve them in the firing line. Preserve them in the hard places. And my friend, the apostles went through hard places, but they were kept. They went through difficult trials, but they were kept. They went through persecutions, and eventually all but one went through martyrdom. But they were kept. They were kept from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Make them holy by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. This is the prayer of Jesus for his disciples. For those ones who followed him, he says, Lord, Father, I am praying that you keep them, you preserve them, that you protect them, that you get them through. And my friend, he will do exactly that. He does not make mistakes here, friends. Oh, the tender, loving care of Jesus Christ. And as much as he cared for them, as much as he wanted the best for them, he still knew that they had to stay in the world. He knew they had to stay in a sin-cursed world. He knew that they were going to go through deep trials. He knew that they needed to be set apart by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. That's why he says, sanctify them. Set them apart by your truth. Your Word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. This was the call upon the disciples of Jesus Christ. These were the ones that Jesus loved and slept with and ate with and walked with. The ones that he had uh, said to them over and over is, fools and slow of heart to believe, the ones who didn't quite get it the first time or the second time or sometimes the third time, but he kept up and he loved them and he kept them and he preserved them and he won them through and he said, Father, now I'm going to have you look after them and do you think the Father didn't hear the prayer of the Son? By all means, they were kept and preserved. Oh, the prayer of Jesus. Oh, to know that Jesus was praying for them what hope they could have as they walked down the hard road, as their life became filled with confusion when Jesus was being crucified, as it seemed like all their dreams had fallen apart, but they were still being kept. My friend, as you walk through this world, and as at times your life is filled with confusion, 
as there are times when you don't know what's next and you don't know what to do, I want you to know that the Father and the Son and the Spirit are looking after you and he will bring you through. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. The picture is so clear there that when we look back at Jesus saying to Peter, I prayed for you that your faith does not fail. In a place where he would deny the Lord three times, still, Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. And my friend, it didn't. God brought him through. And he'll bring you through too if you're his own. <coughs> if you belong to him, he'll bring you through. The evidence of belonging to him is that you take heed to his word. The evidence of belonging to him is that you know that there is only one path, one way. Lord, to whom shall we go, said Peter, I have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. We know you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, yes, Peter, I've chosen you twelve, but one of you is a devil. Peter spoke for the twelve, but Judas Iscariot didn't know. Judas Iscariot didn't really believe. Don't be a false pretender or a false believer. A true believer knows who Jesus really is and puts their faith and trust and hope in him and abides by his word, by the strength and power of the spirit that lives within. Yes, Jesus said, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them in the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I set myself apart. Jesus said, I, not that Jesus needed to be holy, but that he set himself apart from the world. You see, Jesus was in the world, but he wasn't of the world. He experienced the world around him, but he didn't become part of the world's sinful system. And my friend, so God calls you to the same. Do you see, as we look at Jesus' prayer here, how amazing it is how tender and how loving and how full and how rich his care is for you and for me. But particularly here for his disciples as he watched over them and was bringing them through the deepest crisis they would ever know and taking them all the way through the ministry that they did to bring the gospel to the world and then taking them home to be with himself. This is the tender, wonderful preserving, loving care of a praying Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I thank God that Jesus prayed for his disciples. The next devotion that we will do is Jesus praying for all believers in the same chapter. Isn't it exciting to look at the prayer of Jesus as he prays for his glory to be fully revealed as he prays for the glory of the father my friend the glory of god is wonderful and you can behold his glory and as you do you'll be transformed and changed as he prays for his disciples that they might be preserved kept and empowered to live that he committed them into the father's care while he was to go to the cross and that he would get, keep them that they would be kept by the father and by the son through every circumstance and situation I love Jesus but it's because he first loved me oh trust in him my friend if you're not saved you want to be under this prayer you want to be under this care you want to be under this shepherd you want to be under Jesus you want to be walking in the Father's will. You want to be doing the will of God from the heart. You want to be known to be the disciple of the Lord, preserved and kept and prayed for and looked after and taken through every possible storm and trial that the world, the devil, and the flesh can throw at you. You want to be one of those. And I pray that you would. I pray that you would. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's a song, it's not an easy song to sing or to play, but it's a beautiful piece that speaks to us, Be Still My Soul. Don't you know, God is with you, the Lord is on your side. Oh friend, what a Savior we have. Be 
still my soul the lord is on thy side bear patiently the cross of grief or pain leave to thy god to order and provide in every change he faithful will remain be still my soul thy best thy heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. His voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul, when dearest friends depart, and all is dark, come in the veil of tears. Then shalt thou better know his love, his heart who comes to soothe thy sorrow and thy fears be still my soul thy jesus can repay from his own full Thus all he takes away. Be still, my soul. The hour is hasting on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappoint and grief and fear are gone sorrow for god love's purest joys restore be still my soul when change and tears are past all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. This song was a great comfort to me in my suffering and losing Marie, my first wife. And one of the phrases that brought me to tears, that caused me to see the tender care of God. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know. His voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Yes, the waves and winds still know. The storms, the trials, the demons, the deep valleys, all creation knows. 
who rules them. It is Jesus. What a Savior. God bless you. Till next time.